This is demonstrating a manual white blood cell count preparation using the bioanalytic Leukotic kit. This kit has replaced the Unipet, which was discontinued a few years ago. Again, I want to start out with a well-mixed, unclotted EDTA sample. Remove the top. The kit comes with 20 microliter pipettes, and you'll need to um, also have a pipette holder uh, because the pipettes are quite small to be able to do it by hand. So you insert the pipette tip into the hook of the holder. Prepare your um, diluent by having your um, vial open. You want to fill your pipette end to end with blood You want to wipe off the outside without sucking any of your sample into the Kleenex because you don't want extra blood on your pipette uh, affecting your count. Then you're going to release the pipette from the holder by pushing in the end and that tube actually stays in there. It does not come out. So after that you mix it up. And you'll see that the pipette is in there with some of the well-mixed solution. It just stays like that. Um, it takes a minimum of 30 seconds for the red cells to lyse, and the dilution is good for four hours for counting. So once the 30 seconds have elapsed, then you will flood your um, hemocytometer. There are the disposable ones that we find very uh, convenient. They're clean. There is no um, cover slip to deal with. They don't break. Um, and they take very little sample. And the sitting time in these hemocytometers is only three minutes versus 10 minutes on a traditional hemocytometer. So prior to flooding, again, you will mix your sample. They recommend a 10 microliter fill, but if you don't have a 10 microliter pipette, it's very common to just use a Paxel volume tube. Fill it about three quarters full, trying to avoid any bubbles in the end because that makes it a little more difficult um, to flood. You'll notice that that little pipette that went in there initially stays in there. That's not what you use to flood your hemocytometer with. So you have a PCV tube. You're going to take it and touch it just to the very bottom of the half moon on both sides of the hemocytometer. So very gently release the pressure on the PCV tube to fill your chamber. So these sides are known as A and B and you want to fill them both. Now that is a well-filled chamber, an example of an overfill chamber, which then you would want to redo, which happens if you let a large drop expel. So that's why you only want to use a very small amount of pressure. Duh, sorry guys, upside down. So if you see fluid going past the end and you get a dark blue line like that, you've over flooded it. And then you want to start over because your result will be inaccurate. Once you have filled your two sides, the hemocytometer should sit for three minutes and that allows the cells to settle into a single plane prior to counting. If you're going to be delayed, it's a good idea to put them in a moistened um, petri dish or some such uh, Tupperware container something just to prevent evaporation of your dilution. For doing the manual white blood cell count on the disposable hemocytometer, uh, this grid um, is what you will 
be looking for on your hemocytometer. You can actually see it grossly with the naked eye uh, before you place it on the stage. And once you have it on there, underneath the objective, so you shouldn't have any trouble finding your grid. For the manual white blood cell count, you're gonna count, oh, if I had an arrow. Oh. The four large corner squares, so that's this one and this one, so all 16 of those smaller squares within the larger square. So the four corners is what you will be counting. So I'm going to move it onto the 10 power objective, which is what we actually do our counts on. And this is where you would commence your count in the top left hand corner and you would approach it systematically. So you'll go down and over and up and treat each one the same. And you're going to total the cells on each side. So not the total of each of the four corner squares. These small dots represent your white blood cells. And they're uh, easier to appreciate under the microscope, I think, than they are on the screen here. So that's what you will be counting. You will find some cells that directly overlap a line. So for example, this one here is on the line, and this one here and this one here are on the lines. So what you want to do is just be consistent throughout your counting procedure and to count either the left and bottom or the right and top and uh, follow that throughout your count. So again, you'll just count all the white cells here and continue on counting all of these white blood cells. Continue on and continue on and that is one side of the two sides of the hemocytometer. So you want to total that, write that down, keep track of that number. Then you will move your slide over to the other side. And do the exact same procedure on this side. So again, you'll count your four corners here and here and here and total that side and we have provided the equation to then calculate your white blood cell count times 10 to the ninth per liter. In theory the two sides should agree within 10 percent but if the white count is high that gets a little bit more difficult to adhere to but if your two sides are out a ridiculous amount then you'll have to reflood it and that can happen from an uneven flooding to start with or an unevenly mixed sample when you do count them you want to make sure that your substage condenser is low if you have the condenser up too high you will no longer see your cells because there's too much light flowing through so you won't see them all so make sure that your condenser is low enough that you can see your cells on there. And if you have counted it, and then you go to look at a right gain sustained slide, make sure you raise your condenser because then you won't have enough light otherwise. 